Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different's World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there having a wonderful day like your girl and if not, manifest, plan and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all, it's surely coming to you guys for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome, happy to have you guys. Before you leave, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Different's World and you come and learn about your girl, yeah? And speaking of coming and learning, you guys, I'm an author, motivational speaker, CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or more, it don't matter. Just hit the subscribe button for you, girl, yeah? All right, you guys, so today is Sunday. Uh, the second to last Sunday before we end out 2023, you guys. And so with this one, uh, I want to share with you all uh, a mixture of, well, first off, again, you guys know on Sunday, we do our uh, spiritual content uh, for those out there. Like I said, I'm not a religious person, but I'm definitely in tune with God and having a relationship with Him. As, and as far as, you know, being spiritually in tune, that is me. And so with that being said, um, I want to take this time to, and just in case if I'm not able to do so uh, next week, it's going to be pretty busy for me. Uh, I want to share with you guys uh, my last uh, spiritual thoughts for 2023 and with it this vlog is going to be entitled uh, spirituality versus mental health uh, with that because a lot of times uh, some people feel that you know spirituality or uh, mental health is two completely different things and then on the other point of it people feel that it's one and the same in my opinion i say that spirituality and mental health go hand in hand uh, because with, with it, you know, it can, one can affect the other or, you know, one can't function without the other, in my opinion. Um, as well as with mental health and your physical health, it, it all in tune with one with the spiritual and, and mental, excuse me, your emotional health, I meant to say. Um, and again, like, like I said, some people don't think, you know, that spirituality has an effect on your mental health or your mental health can affect your spirituality, but in fact, it can. Um, doing some research as well as, you know, getting in the book and, and getting my own interpretation of God's word. Um, he, he tells us, you know, to keep our minds sharp and, uh, and, and focused and away from, you know, those negative thoughts because when they come to us and, you know, try to take over us, you know, just one little thought, that's what can lead us down the road in you know, darkness and off the road of path that we're supposed to be on. And so, um, with it, you know, like I said, for me, all this year, 2023, I'm so proud of myself for maintaining and keeping my mental health in check. With it, uh, I've been allowed to, you know, keep my spiritual health in check. Now, again, I'm not no you know, religious person. I don't go to church like that. Um, but I do, you know, get along with God and, and talk with Him and, and get in that book and, and find what works best for me and what fits me best spiritually. And, and in doing so, I, 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 like I said, keeping my mental health in check allowed for me to stay in tune you know, spiritually and, and trust in God's word to allow him to you know, heal me mentally, emotionally, and physically. You know, um, so far, you know, it's been a struggle, but you know, uh, so far I've been down like 12 pounds this, this year. I'm mean, trying to work to do more. I wish it was a little higher, but I'm proud of that, you know, so. Like I said, when we came to keep my mental health in check, it, it, everything will fell in place. And so I'm going to continue to do so, and as well as with my spiritual health, you know, continue to trust in God and His Word, and, and knowing that, you know, not everything coming my way is going to be easy, but just know that when those dark times come my way, it's going to make me a bigger and stronger person once it has passed. And um, I've also found two dope videos, one, you know, Intel for, you know, mental health, speaking of the importance of it, as well as I found another video uh, where we have a doctor here who, uh, he's actually a Christian and he believes in the power of you know, healing as well as with medicine and using medicine to heal, you know, your mental health and with the power of prayer. And so I found it very, you know, interesting. You know, we have a doctor here, a doctor of science who is also a man of faith. And so with it, you know, I want to share with you all how, you know, spirituality and mental health can be one and the same. So with that being said, you guys, check out these two dope videos I found. The first one will be um, in regards to mental health and speaking on the importance of it. And this is from Leon, the Leon Le Levi Foundation. And the second one will be from 100 Huntley Street. 
and that's a part of spirituality versus mental health. And so once we're done with that, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about what's going on in different world, yeah? So here it is. Check it out. Hey, what's up? I'm Alex. I want to talk about mental health, which we're starting to discuss more in our communities. It's our emotional well-being and impacts our everyday life, how we feel, how we interact with others, even how we think and view things. Our general wellness is connected, so your mental health can influence physical health. Mental health is how you handle experiences in your life, how you cope with everything and take care of your mind and your emotions. Just like you can have physical challenges, you can have mental health challenges, and you need to get help if you're struggling with either. You can't heal a broken foot on your own. You feel me? So you shouldn't have to deal with your emotional ups and downs alone. There is support out there for everyone. Mental health is kind of like a cycle. One day you feel good, you know? Sometimes you might be stressed and overwhelmed about how to deal with stuff. And other times you might feel stuck and challenged, like struggling with something bigger than what you can manage. That might lead to a mental health crisis. Throughout our lives, our mental wellness can change based on what we're going through. Mental health challenges don't have a single cause. It could be your experiences or the chemistry of your brain. What's most important is that you take care of yourself. No matter how you're feeling, there is help for you. I've had my own mental health challenges. I wanna share my story with you because I wish I'd reached out for help earlier than I did. I was always feeling low, tired, and noticed that I was getting irritated and angrier. I started sleeping more to try to forget about how I was feeling. I kind of knew something was wrong because I couldn't shake it. I've been facing more stress than normal, but I come from an immigrant family. Everyone holds me to really high standards. I felt like there's no room for mistakes or struggles. I didn't want to reach out because I didn't want anyone to think I was weak or crazy. There was also a language difference. I didn't even know where to start. I wanted someone that looked or talked like me to understand. I felt so uncomfortable and lost. I finally talked to one of my friends who went through something similar. She told me about the differences between seeking a professional versus talking to family and friends. She said her therapist walked her through everything, like you can get better by doing this and will continue to, like monitor how you feel. I decided to go to a community center first. It made me feel less alone to find a community of people I related to and made me feel more comfortable with going to therapy in the future if I ever have problems again. There are so many ways that people can take care of themselves. Most people have their own struggles at some point. You might experience physical or emotional changes or changes in your routine. You know yourself best, so pay attention when you're feeling off or different. It's okay not to be okay right now. We encourage you to talk about your feelings, even if you're facing more stress than normal and want to vent. You can learn ways to cope. You can find out how to take better care of yourself and you can feel better both mentally and physically. Everyone needs a little support sometimes. You can choose what's most comfortable for you in your situation. Talking has a way of making people feel better, of giving us a sense of relief. And if there's something a little more serious going on, there are things you can do to feel better. Just don't try to do it alone because you're not alone. Reach out, it's worth a try. I mean, I was an anesthetist. I didn't know anything about mental health. And then when I started to learn about it, and, I'm real, and God showed me how the medications could help set people free from depression, anxiety, and, and mood swings. And that medicines really had a role. So I started to treat Christians very aggressively. If they came into my office and had the disorder, I treated them. And so I got all kinds of criticism from the Christian community that I was giving secular or even demonic pills to Christians when it was a faith issue and they shouldn't be taking medicine. So many Christians came off their medicines because Christians or any Christian leaders told them to never come back and see me. I represented Satan. Oh dear. So, so, I, so I took a lot of heat from, from people who took the extreme view.
But you did enlarge your territory. Yeah, fortunately, what happened, God in, in my training course, so I had great success with medicines, but I didn't know and understand the other deliverance, inner healing, count. I didn't understand those methods. Even spiritual warfare. Yeah, I didn't really know much about that either. So I was raised in the church, so I didn't know anything about demons. <laughs> and so then, so then I had demonic manifestations in my office. People, evil spirits started speaking out of people and grabbing them right in my room. And so that was kind of hairy. And so I had to learn about the spiritual part. And that's where Neil Anderson's books, The Bondage Breaker, helped me tremendously. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, at that point, I thought I was balanced. I understood the med medical and the spiritual. But then we had a marriage crisis, as we've already talked about. And there was no pill for that. And it wasn't deliverance. It was baggage. So God in his mercy walked me through the three parts. And then I thought, well, maybe other Christians need to know this. And I wrote the book. The three parts then are? There's physical issues. There's spiritual issues and there's personality issues. The Bible says there's, we are body, soul, and spirit, which is body, personality, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we can have problems in each of those three areas that affect our mood, relationships, thought processes. And God showed us that we can, He wants to help us in all three of those areas. So in the physical realm, those are the psychiatric disorders, depression, anxiety, and mood swings. In the spiritual realm, that's the harassment of Satan. And in the personality area, the wounds of our past, the baggage, the strongholds, the lies that we believe affect our relationships and our thinking. And in the lives of so many, emotional unwellness is the Achilles heel. You call oh, it absolutely. the Achilles heel. Yeah, I think that's the number one reason for spiritual weakness and spiritual sliding out of the kingdom. That's the number one reason for marriage and relationship failure. I think it's the number one reason for trouble at work. Relationship, personality issues. Emotional baggage is universal. Today we're focusing on oh, fear, worry, and anxiety. I think we all can relate to having moments, maybe chapters of those three things, one or all of them. When do you know that it's a mood disorder? Yeah, that's a very important question is how do you know who needs medicines for their fears and who's just having a normal life experience? Yeah. Like there is such a thing as normal fear and anxiety and that is to be afraid of driving too fast and going off the edge of a cliff. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's appropriate. But what I treat is the roadblock fear or the kind of fear that damages your life, like it restricts your life. So that's, that's the problem fear. But the way you tell- Like agoraphobia. You, you, you don't want to leave your house. Yeah, that's true. And so, so that would be, that actually is in the medical zone. Oh. So the way you tell if it's a chemical imbalance mood disorder is if you can't shut your mind off. So that's the key diagnostic symptom for depression, anxiety, or bipolar. If you can't shut your mind off over long periods of time, like this over years or months, not just a, one evening, if you can't shut your mind off, that means you have a serotonin or a chemical imbalance. So your, your nerve cells aren't working properly and you've lost thought control. So if you have an anxiety disorder, you lose thought control and you, and you can't stop worrying. If you have depressive disorder, you lose thought control and you just become very negative. If you're bipolar, you can go swing from too down to too pumped and driven. So that's how you tell if it's chemical. Also, in the book, in, in, there's a chapter in the book with checklists of symptoms so you can do a self-assessment. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because people, people will go to the doctor and say, I have headaches, and he's not going to say, well, are you too worried? which is making you have headaches. So I tell people, do your own self-assessment before you go to the doctor. Go to the doctor with your symptoms organized. So take the chapter with all these self-assessment questionnaires, do depression, anxiety, mood swings, underline all the symptoms that you see in yourself, and you take the book to the doctor and say, this is what I'm experiencing, and then you'll likely get the right treatment. Now you put these guys together because they're, they're friendly monsters. They, they connect to one another. You give three causes of fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the same way there are three parts to humans and three links in our chain of emotional bondage, there are physical causes of fear, there are spiritual causes of fear, and there are personality causes of fear. So the physical causes are the anxiety disorders, which we were just speaking of. So that's when you have a brain chemical malfunction and you can't stop worrying. So that's treated by a doctor with medications or praying, praying for physical healing, of course. Then in the spirit realm, Satan wants to keep you fearful. So he wants to insert fearful thoughts into your mind. Mm -hmm. And then in the personality area, if you've been raised by fearful parents, for example, they will teach you that fear is your lifestyle. So fear, being fearful is just something you learn. So in that scenario, fear is a learned behavior. Mm, it's been modeled. Yes, exactly. Yes. Now in the demonic interference, you say that a, a very popular missile mm -hmm. of Satan into your brain is, what if? Yes. What if? And, and, and isn't this where we have the, the famous quote, you know, 90% of what we worry about 
never happens. Oh, absolutely. And God showed me, because he, he was teaching me how to separate a demonically inserted thought, which is just there to torment you, yeah. from a, a le legitimate reasonable thought. And so what God told me is the next time, for me personally, the next time I get a thought that really makes me frightened, he said, check to see if it started with what if. So I like to think what if is, are the words on the nose cone of a demonic thought missile. And so, because what if are usually the thoughts that torment us the most, mm -hmm. that make us fearful. So when you get a what if thought that's very disturbing or anxiety provoking, consider that it probably has a dark origin and that way you can repel it. And take every thought captive right. to make it obedient to Christ. Don't let him take you down that rabbit trail. Christians are hard to treat. Yes, quote, absolutely. Quote, unquote. Because? Well, because they over-spiritualize things. You see, in the mental health realm, we're talking about thoughts. And so Christians assume that all thinking is spiritual. Well, thinking has spiritual side effects without question. But the origin of your thoughts and the control of your thoughts is physical. So I've spent my entire career arguing with Christians to try to convince them that they have a physical disorder with spiritual symptoms that needs physical treatment. And so I have so much trouble getting them to stay on their medicine because they say, no, fear is, a, fear is a spiritual issue because the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. So it's a command, so that way. But if you have anxiety disorder, you can't stop worrying. It's physical, it's, it's, it's a chemical imbalance. You need medicines to stop it. But there's so much intimidation and, you know, the, the, the stigma of not having enough faith. Yes, exactly. Shouldn't God heal you? Mm -hmm. Now, how do you know when, I, I guess you don't know, do you? Because sometimes God does heal. Oh, yes. I've had lots of my patients entrenched healed. disorders. Oh, yes. I've had a number of people healed. And in fact, it, it's so, it, it, I even have a, a, a video on my website is how to know when you're healed from a mood disorder how to know when you can come off your medicines because I've had a number of my patients healed, some even after I prayed for them, instantly. Wonderful. It's, it's, so it's actually happened, I've documented it, but here's, here's what happens. If you've been healed, your mind clears, you have full thought control. See, the purpose of the pills is to give you back thought control if you've lost thought control, depression, anxiety, mood swings. So if your mind suddenly clears and you have thought control and you're no longer disturbed by tormenting thoughts, something has changed. So I I've actually have a little video explaining that process. And I've noted here, there are nearly 40 antidepressants for some the challenge to get the right one. Yeah, it's trial and error. Oh, that can be a journey, can't it? Yes, that's, that was actually my role, was helping people find the right medicines to try to encourage them that, okay, this one may not work, but the next one might, and you just have to keep trying them until you find the right one and your mind clears but it's worth it. So it's worth the pursuit of the right medicine. Some people after one or two, they just give up. Well, we're here to say, keep going. This is a winnable war. Now, apart from all the recognized disorders and, and, and causes of fear, we now live in a world where you can legitimately wake up afraid. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you can choose to be afraid. Really? If there's enough, if you just keep reading the papers. So what do you say to it's, somebody who, succumbed to that? Well, if they have a medical condition, of course, get it treated. But for the average Christian who is fearful but is not needing medications, the key is, I have the mind of Christ. Jesus didn't worry about anything. And when he was, he could have, I mean, there were people trying to kill him, but he didn't worry about anything because of his relationship with his father. And he had such an intimate relationship with, the, with God the Father. God the Father was just constantly reassuring him and pouring into him. And we can have the same relationship. Perfect love casts out fear. And we can have perfect love as we connect intimately to God the Father. So we're to live like Jesus did. Well, that, uh, that's a, what, what better model could there be than that? And I, I just today read this by Francis Roberts. Relinquishment of burdens and fears begins where adoration and worship of God become the occupation of the soul. That's a pretty singular focus. As, as we connect with the love of Father God, our anxieties can melt away because we can just follow the, the lifestyle of Jesus. He walked in perfect love. <laughs> Here's a little bit of a lighter prescription, doctor, from someone else for worry. Schedule all your worrying for a specific half hour about the middle of the day, then take a nap during this period. What do you think, Doc? Well, think it's worth a it? try. It's worth a try. <laughs> this has been wonderful. And um, 
I just can't say how grateful I am for all that you have brought to us. There's so much need. And please know right now that our prayer partners are ready to pray for you, whatever's robbing you of your joy and freedom today. All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that uh, informative video on mental health from the Leon Levi Foundation. Be sure to check them out and show them some love, as well as enjoying that second video that follow up from a Huntley Street, uh, excuse me, the 100 Huntley Street, uh, talking with Dr. Um, Mullins, or Grant Mullins, about you know his faith and you know uh, prescribing medication to heal mental health and praying for you know cure for his clients to be healed from you know depression and anxiety through the positive you know, medication how i feel about medication and then um getting on psycho meds uh for me right now i feel it's not for me uh i've been down that road you know coming up in foster care and growing as being in the system that's one of the first things that they do is uh declare you or deem you you know uh, bipolar or depressed and you know, prescribe you some medication and then the thing about it is you know it may work it may not work you know but it, it also depends on you know when you take yourself off of it or you know you wean yourself off or they take you off it can take you into a totally different person um, i remember being on antidepressants and then at one moment i was happy and then the next day i was feeling like a zombie and then the next day i just didn't know and i didn't like how the medicine was making me feel and so from then on i just knew that medicine or, or psycho medication is not may not work for me um, but it doesn't mean that that's not an option for others. And I say it may not may not be an option for me later on down the road. I just know how I feel about it now. But with that being said, don't let you know my opinions <laughs> stop whatever how you guys feel about it. Like I said, it's on you guys to do your own homework, do your own research, and find what works best for you when it comes to keeping your mental health in check, as well as with your spiritual health. Like I said, I had to step away from the church house and lose religion in order to gain a relationship with God. You know, I couldn't hear the word of God through everybody else cloud of judgment, what, you know, their opinions were supposed to be and how you're supposed to carry yourself, you know, in Christ. So I had to step away from that. And so again, sometimes it takes finding what works best for you and, and, and taking little, you know, nudges here, nudges there and putting it all together and, you know, coming up with your own plan of action. That's okay. That's fine. Like I said, do what works best for you because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the water. Especially when it comes to your mental health and in being spiritually in tune, if you are that type of person, you know, again, I'm not speaking to everybody out there and I'm not trying to, you know, preach religion here. It's definitely not what this is about. But those out there who believe, you know, in a higher power, you know, a, a, a higher being, if you will, this is for you guys, for us. So with that being said, you guys, uh, just remember that, you know, spirituality and mental health goes hand in hand. Can't have one without the other, especially when it comes to you know keeping your spiritual health in check. You, if you are you know a religious person or a spiritual person, you will need to rely on God to help you get through those trying times. And so it is going to take you know having that faith and, and that belief in God if you know you are that type of person when it comes to you know battling you know depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts, man. I, I, I lean on him all the time, 24-7. When I wake up in the morning, doing my morning meditations and prayers, it's the first thing I do is thank him for waking me up and, you know, praying for his uh, protection over me and my family. And so with it, you know, I encourage you guys to do the same. And again, find what works best for you, as well as if you guys enjoy this vlog and this topic, show me by liking, sharing, commenting, and definitely, you guys, hit that subscribe button so when I drop this content, you guys come into different world and you come and learn what's going on with me, girl, yeah? And so with that being said, you guys, moving on, uh, closing out 2023. Again, you guys, go to my website, differenceworld.net. Check out all my other social media handles, including my TikTok and Instagram. Uh, check me out there for those that are looking for motivational speakers, looking to do any collaborations coming up for next year, whatever the case may be, get at your girl. I'm free of charge as of now. So just go to my website, differenceworld.net, and look at your girl there, or you can email, DM, uh, just 
you know, come find your girl. I ain't hard to find. <laughs> well, what else we got, you guys? Uh, yes, don't forget my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. It's available on my website as well. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get you a family that's a bookworm. A book this is, again, a great book for those out there uh, who want to learn about, you know, their history and, and, and a different perspective. Uh, again, this book was written to encourage and uh, <clears throat> to promote thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America, and I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, you guys, be advised that this is intended for a mature audience. It has sensitive content, and so if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. <laughs> Just get you a little fire blanket. You'll be all right, you guys. That's the point of it all, is to have these conversations that need to be had that are often swept under the rug and turned a blind eye to. And of, of course, you know, this book may, you know, rub some people the wrong way, but it, that's not the point. The point is to get you to come to that round table to have these conversations that talks about accountability, you know, acknowledgement, and coming up with ways that we can create, you know, unity and systemic change and moving forward and planting those seeds for the next generation and so again go to my website differenceworld.net and get your copy of my book what if a controversial paradigm shift you guys so again i appreciate all the love and support that i'm getting 2024 i'm manifesting that my book sales is going to be up a hundred thousand you know millions of copies going to be sold worldwide and so watch and see you guys like i said manifest plan and prepare for it putting it out there to the universe so it's, it's definitely going to happen i don't know when but i know it's going to happen and so with that, you guys, uh, moving on, what else we got going on? So tomorrow uh, is Monday. Uh, I was supposed to drop this vlog uh, back in November. I'm gonna give y'all full disclosure. Like I said, I got real backed up. Um, and so I'm dropping it for you guys uh, tomorrow. Uh, I don't wanna really drop the title with you guys, so that's why I say hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into different world and come and learn. But yes, uh, tomorrow will be uh, our last motivational vlog for 2023. So definitely, you guys hit that notification bell, subscribe button. So when I drop it, you guys go and uh, check it out. Uh, what else? What else? What else we got, you guys? Um, let's go ahead and do our mental health check, you guys. We're almost at the end of it, anyways. And again, uh, for those out there that are going through any type of you know mental anguish, including depression, anxiety, having suicidal thoughts. Uh, even, you know, dealing with bullying or drug relapse, please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you, be it talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, talking with a preacher, uh, getting on medication. Uh, again, do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and keep you going all the way and possibly taking anybody with you. Know or if you need these mental health resources, or if you know anybody who may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1 800 273 8255, or you can call or text 988, or you can text 741 741. And for those that are outside, excuse me, those who prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or you can visit 988lifeline.org or those that are outside the U.S. that's watching your girl's YouTube channel, you guys check out incounseling.com. And remember, you guys, I said it once before, I'll say it again. Don't forget to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. And, and again, because you're the captain of your own ship and you decide what works where, where to navigate the waters, nobody else. And so with that, when it comes to your mental health, your spiritual health, financial, physical, whatever whatever the case may be, man, find what works best for you. You know, I'm giving you, you know, my opinions and my thoughts and what's working for me. And you can try it on your own if you like. But again, just remember, it's on you. So don't come to me different. I tried it and it didn't work. Well, again, full disclosure, buddy. <laughs> you got to do your own homework. And if one doesn't work, try something else. The main point of it all is not to give up. And then don't take no for an answer when it comes to your mental health. You need to come to that dark side and you're going off the deep end to fight the good fight to the end. And so, again, remember, you guys, um, do whatever it is that you have to. Keep your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end. Because at the end of the day, you know, whatever trial and tribulation that you are going through, this too shall pass and you will get through it. So going off the deep end is not an option. It's not worth it. So don't do it. 
And then we're just gonna move on, you know, bring it back to some positive vibes for you guys before we close out. Uh, and again, I hope you guys appreciate, uh, I know I did, it was an eye-opener for me when it comes to, you know, spirituality and mental health and seeing how it goes hand in hand for me. So I know others may feel different about that. And of course, you guys feel free to drop me a comment. Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this topic. And of course, if you enjoyed the vlog, show me by liking, sharing, comments, and definitely, you guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into different well and you come and learn about your girl, yeah? All right, you guys. And lastly, um, what we're going to uh, remind you guys is whatever it is in life that you're feeling you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and then it will surely come to you guys. Difference well. Come and learn. What if? What if at 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author different. Go to differenceworld.net.